Hi everyone, today we will be talking about self-service actions. Self-service actions give any persona the option to perform any action with a product-like experience. The idea is to leverage existing scripts and logics that you already have in your organization, but expose them in a safe way to different personas in your company and organization. Self-service actions can be used to perform any number of different logics and pipelines or trigger workflows. For example, you could scaffold a new microservice or spin up a new developer environment uh, or uh, create a new secret, for example. And this slide is made as an inspiration uh, for you to understand what different sort of workflows can be invoked with actions, but really disguise the limits and any action you can think of can be implemented using port. Now, how do you go about creating an action? The first step is creating a form or a wizard. Port provides a variety of UI components that make it easy to create a tailored UI experience and a UI form that is easy to consume and use when invoking a new action. You can have text inputs, numbers, arrays, and even complete configs, as well as utilizing existing information from the software catalog. The second step is setting up a backend. The backend is actually your logic running in the background and performing the request that the action was for. Uh, your backend can be an API, a, a serverless function, a CI CD pipeline, and much more if it can receive the payload uh, from port uh, with the inputs of the user. That is a valid backend that can perform uh, the action request. The third step is reflecting the action progress and updating the catalog. And this is the part where the backend keeps the developer or the persona that is using port inside the loop, uh, giving him live logs, showing him what exactly happened uh, during the action, uh, did it succeed or fail, how far has it progressed so far, uh, the final status, uh, and also update the catalog with the changes that occurred because of that action that was triggered. Now, there is also an optional step for setting up guardrails and control usage. So you could, for example, uh, configure that only certain users can trigger a specific action. Uh, and also you can use manual approval to make sure that destructive or dangerous or maybe expensive actions uh, must go through a, an additional approval step to make sure that they really should be performed. Now, port actions leverage your existing platform. So when using self-service actions in port, there are two personas that act. First is port, acting as the UI and orchestration layer. Port provides the action framework and the UI forms. It integrates with the different backends that your company might utilize. It constructs the payload and forwards it to the backend, and it provides the role-based role -based access control and the audit log and action logs. Now, on the other hand, your platform or your backend, which again is your API, your CI CD, your workflow or serverless function, uh, has to actually perform the business logic and stream back those live logs, uh, reflect the action progress, whether it succeeded or failed and so on. Uh, and also at the end, update the software catalog of the different changes, which entities were created or modified or maybe deleted based on that action that was requested. Up next, we will see how to create an action from scratch and then use it uh, in real time uh, to see how a full action lifecycle looks in port.